Hello, Blizzard fans! This is Talkin' Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Blizzard upload. This is a game between Railgun and Beast on Terraform, the latter edition. This is a replay that Railgun sent me about a week ago. I really appreciate him helping me out, and you too can send your replays to falconpaladin at gmail.com, and I will cast them at this point. I cannot guarantee I will not get overwhelmed in the future, but at this point I can pretty much guarantee that uh, I will cast them if you send them to me. So, hooray! Railgun and Beastie are going back and forth, saying lots of lags today. Beastie says this is his first game, and we will see. Beastie says, what do Terrans do in Legacy of the Void? Railgun says, Liberators and Bio. I know for a fact that Railgun hates Liberators so much. I've cast a couple of the games now where Liberators come in, kick his trash, they set up that little defender mode, kill workers, kill everything on the ground, Hellbats at the front door, causing trouble. And then it makes him very sad, and sometimes he loses. So, we'll see what happens with Railgun in this game. It is a TVZ. Oh, I didn't introduce the players. In the top left of Terraform, the latter edition, we have the Red Zerg player. It is Railgun. And in the bottom right, we have the blue Terran player, Beastie QT. We're going to call him Beast. A little bit easier to do there. Production tab shows we are actually getting a Reaper out. So we're going to slow the game down because we like to follow those Reapers with their jetpacks on their back. Super fun. And press the wrong button. There we go. There is the follow. A lot of chat back and forth with Railgun and Beastie. I'm always really suspicious of players that do this, that talk a lot. I always assume they're cheesing me. And oh my gosh, it is a cheese. Bunker rush at the front door here. Reaper inside the bunker in range of that hatchery. Again, not a huge deal just because Reapers don't do all that damage to buildings that like they used to. So they can't really ever kill this hatchery, but popping out, trying to kill workers back and forth, being faster than these lings as long as he stays on the edge of the creep and doesn't get too close. But here we go. Popping out is the queen. Is there enough to actually kill this bunker is the question. I think there is with the queen DPS combined with the lings. Uh, KD8 charge comes out. His absolutely nothing. The lings going to town on this bunker being salvaged at the last second by beast and yes does get the salvage gets that 75 minerals back there are two reapers again not too happy they are not sure how happy they are with that one kill and zero kills each but popping up into the main here trying to do what they can kd8 charge once more again there was a bug fix that pretty much means that drones and workers that get hit by the kd8 charge will go back to work automatically after being knocked back that was not the case for a while which can be a big source of annoyance if you have to manually tell your workers to get back to work after they get knocked back. Not good times. This Reaper, I think, is pretty much conceded that it's going to die. Heading back on in. Oh, no. Still alive here with one hit point. Is it going to die? Oh, <laughs> the probe actually kills it. Well played there by Railgun. Knowing exactly where that Reaper is coming. Brings the drone off the line. Kills it as soon as it lands. Railgun saying they fixed that. I think maybe talking about... The knockback thing. Yeah, I think he's going to say basically what I said. So walling off here with Evolution Chambers at the front door. Getting a creep tumor here as well. Two creep tumors. I like to see that creep spread. And yeah, this is the map. Actually, I was speaking uh, with a friend of mine, uh, Fanboy from Fanboy Gaming. Probably link him here um, in the comments of this video. But he was asking which map has the crazy gold bases in between you and your opponent. And that is going to be Terraform. I couldn't remember what it was called at the time, but here it is. So here comes some Hellions coming to the front door. Third base coming up. For Railgun, back in the Terran base, pretty much just making Hellions, making Hellions, and a Viking here. I guess the Viking is to hunt overlords. Haven't seen that in a while, though, in TVZ. But, again, really good to get kind of supply block the Terran player as best you can. If you can actually find the overlords. One's hiding over here. One's hiding here. Oh, can actually hiding. Coming in for that scout. The Hellions are now Hellbats. Transforming much, much more tanky against these queens. These queens are slow. They need to save this third base desperately. In production are eight lings. They have to come in here and try to save this. Hellbats do enough damage to actually kill buildings. They do 18 damage with two range there. So again, 18 damage, pretty close up. But again, you can't kill buildings if they're left alone for long enough. The Overlord Scout saw, I think he saw the factory if we change here. Uh, yes, did see the factory, saw the starport, saw the third command center. So Railgun got a pretty good scout off. That way, Viking trying to find that other overlord, but no, it's over here hiding in the corner. You're not going to find him. Taking this base is Beast. These mineral patches are a little bit glitched, as Railgun said in a previous cast that I cast with him. Uh, I think I'll probably have posted that by now, but either way, the workers sometimes come from the other side here, which is really annoying, but back over here at the third base, more Hellbats coming on in. There is an unburrowed spine crawler. unfortunately. This is number. Can can actually kill these queens. The Lings trying to delay as best they can. They end up dead, though. 
this drone running for its life to the base pushing back and back but the roaches are now here roaches doing pretty good against these hellbats the hellbats trying to get inside the natural they're pretty much sacrificial they know they're going to die but they're going to take a lot of workers with them here we go roaches chasing them as fast as they can they are fast on the creep individual hellbats are being focused down and yes they do eventually get cleaned up their total number of workers lost is five for railgun and have to say that is pretty impressive considering how much harassment he has been under this whole entire time the viking is here with two kills might have found another overlord perhaps during that attack i wasn't really paying attention to that guy but he's very happy with two kills that is more than vikings usually get in the early game i'd have to say and here we go the liberators and the hellbats this is what railgun complains about this particular strategy seems to be really really good against zerg seems the hellbats can handle things like roaches okay things like zerglings absolutely and the liberator set up that defender mode just kill everything else they do really good against air as well mutas don't fare particularly well against them the roaches coming up along the right side swinging down from top to bottom gonna see if there's a third base i have to assume yes checking for that third there's not one there get scattered out though by that viking and the liberator is going to come home there's a pause though right in the moment oh no the supply depot is lower the roaches get right on inside take down a supply depot defender mode coming up forcing pretty much zoning the roaches away here keeping them away from the scvs that's very very excellent play by those liberators killing supply depots left and right going to try to take down these hellbats as well can we actually get them oh defender mode coming up no the roaches trying to escape but there's nowhere to go defender mode Ooh, kills one of them immediately another one takes a hit but does manage to survive all these hellbats are going down this mass liberator play is doing so well the poor roaches seem to be stuck in this corner there's nowhere for them to go run now this is your chance oh trying to run as fast as they can killing scvs but that 85 damage from that defender mode okay 90 damage with that plus upgrade is just so powerful against ground units like these roaches which are normally pretty tanky but look at this one hit two hit bam burning to death all the roaches are now gone beast has cleaned it up quick as can be fairly painlessly i don't know if you lost too many scvs there i guess 14 died i don't know if that was during that attack necessarily more liberators at the front door here of that third base boom two shotting queens queens running in the ai saying we can take these liberators but no railgun says get back get back liberators two kills zero kills there how many do these other liberators have this is a mass liberator play one zero four four zero zero okay so maybe not as effective as i thought fourth base now coming up for beast feeling very confident corruptors coming up are the corruptors for the liberators i have to assume that they are they do do 14 damage 20 versus massive i don't think these count as massive no they're just armored mechanical but i guess maybe they can hold their own against liberators we'll have to see we do have the sensor tower here checking things out so the corruptors are not being hidden but the splash damage from these uh, missile launchers from the liberators do quite a bit of damage again they do eight damage for two attacks so 16 total again with that splash hmm, i don't know if corruptors are the answer here upgrading to a lair uh upgrading actually to a hive rather is railgun here at the nine minute mark we have a bit of a hellion drop here at the third base lings coming in the hellions are not being micro they might get cleaned up fairly quickly no finally getting moved but spine crawler helps out does get killed how many drones have now died nine to 14 scv so railgun doing pretty good there he just needs to find the right composition to handle this i feel his worker count is good he has 65 workers he's spending his money well he's getting upgrades getting carapace getting groove spines getting melee attacks level two hydralisks hydralisks are okay but again that defender mode one shots hydras i think especially let's see here uh yeah so that 90 attack with the upgrade that he has hydras i think only have about 80 hp right around there they're a bit of a glass cannon they hit hard but they do not stand up very well to attacks so creep spread again coming across the map here checking for the presence of maybe a fifth base but here come the lings moving right on into this fourth it's a planetary fortress so that will not do well for those lings they cannot kill many scvs at all with that planetary raining down fire on them 40 damage from that ibex cannon ibex cannon i don't know what it's called ibex possibly here comes another viking still running around same guy yeah same two kill viking creep spread again looking okay railgun i don't know that makes a super priority of it not something i really do either but um you know all the best players get that creep spread up and going as long as it's not being constantly pushed back and you have a couple creep queens you can get it across the map fairly quickly so what are we doing in the production tab hydra's coming out here the uh flying carapace actually a choice Perhaps he feels like his Corruptors can do a little bit better against those Liberators with that armor for his flying units. I have to assume that's going to be a really good decision here. More Hydras popping on out. A giant mass of Corruptors here right off the natural. 
Hydrolisk do a plus two, plus one upgrade. So plus two carapace, plus one on that missile attack. Creep spread looking pretty darn good. Moving out, are we moving out here? Man, look at all that. How much? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen liberators. This is not going to go well. I have to assume defender mode coming up on two of them. Zoning things out, trying to take down these creep tumors. But actually, you can't kill buildings. Ha ha! Defender Bone does not kill buildings, and creep tumors are buildings. You can't push back the creep with these liberators. You can kill everything else in the world, though. I am so <laughs> worried about Railgun right here. Let's zoom out on this battle. And here come the Hydras trying to get some free shots off. Free shots on the liberators. Liberators has had to pull back instead. Not too interested in doing a direct face-off with those Hydras yet. So again, Railgun just buying time, getting these upgrades, getting Ultras out. Ultras actually die fairly quickly. Ooh, there come the Vipers. Vipers with Parasitic Bomb on these clumped up Liberators. That has got to be the answer for Railgun. 75 Harvesters now has that Hive Tech upgrading that plus armor for his flying units, as well as the Ground Carapace and Melee Attack Level 3 and Chitinous Plating. So here we go, trying to do what we can on those Liberators. The Hydras from below doing a pretty good job, but just a couple volleys. And then Beastie backs the heck out. Attack here from Hellbats at the fourth base. This single Ultralisk might be able to clean this up by himself. Ling's coming in to help as well, as well as the spine crawlers. All those Hellbats do die immediately. I don't think they got any kills whatsoever. We are actually uh, using the ability uh, Consume on the Roachworn here for the Vipers. Try to get enough energy for that Parasitic Bomb, but here we come. Defender mode on everything right now. Parasitic Bomb going down on all the Vipers. We need to split them now and doing a pretty good job with it, but a bunch of them are going down. The Corruptors are taking down the Remainders, and that is it. All the Liberators get cleaned up. Beastie says Balance has arrived. Oh, just kidding. There is a single Liberator left. It is now dead. Using Consume now on the Hive. Don't want to get that town too low. <laughs> it is 111 to 180 supply. <laughs> <laughs> Beastie says, I forgot about OP. I guess talking about that parasitic bomb. Railgun says, well, you did go mass liberator. I mean, mass anything in StarCraft isn't going to be that good. There's pretty much going to be a pretty solid counter for anything you do with a single type of unit. Hellions coming on here to the fourth base again, getting cleaned up fairly well. A couple drone kills, maybe 22 total drones have died. Here we come with this army. Ultras and Lings and Corruptors and Hydras. A good composition. Has Railgun figured out how to deal with this? That is going to be the question. Moving on up, trying to snipe down this command center. It is going to fall. And are we going to push in Railgun? Yes, we are. Let's zoom out. Going to try to take down this fourth base. Officially, I think is what it is. Hydra's doing a good job. Um, coming on in here again as well. There are Cyclones using the lock-on ability here on these Ultras. Actually, that's a pretty good decision. That 500 damage to the Ultras over time. Pretty good decision as well. Abduct going down on some of those Cyclones. Three or four of them are dying when they get pulled into the clump. Trying to kite as best he can is Beast here. SCV's being pulled off the line, but they melt immediately to those Ultralisks. Ultra's a bit stuck here, dying as well. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. All the Ultras get cleaned up. Beast manages to handle that a little bit better than I thought he would. It's still 174 to 110 supply. SCV deaths are 28 at this point but again this base at the top right is still available for beast and what is going to be the continued choice here oh greater spire i guess railgun really likes the brew lords here in legacy of the void we don't see very much in heart of the swarm but it might be an answer for some things in lotv for the zerg race we'll have to see if he can make them work upgrading oh pathogen glands for his infestors is he going brew lord infester <laughs> railgun saying that unit's not balanced at all. Bit of complaining, um, I think, about the Cyclone. Beastie saying, yeah, the Viper. <laughs> so neither player are very happy right now. Calling the Cyclone the Rocket Launcher on Wheels is Railgun. Trying to drop uh, bases here at the bottom, but unfortunately for Beast, there's already a hatchery here. Gonna get burned down by this army. The Cyclone's coming in. 20 damage from the missile pods, but this, uh, uh, 600 damage. Did they upgrade that? Cyclone <clears throat> weapons on a target unit, 600 damage over 14 seconds. So that hatchery, quick work has been made of it. We do back out. Are we actually going to make Broodlords? Yes, there we go. Immediately morphing in the Broodlords here, uh, right about in the middle of the map. Going to try to deal with the Cyclones that way. I don't think Cyclones can lock on to air units. Um... Maybe. Maybe it can. We'll have to see. We might learn something here today. 
pushing up with the Cyclone Hellion Army, taking care uh, of those creep tumors using the lock-on ability. Seems like overkill to me, but yeah, here we come. From the air, Ultralisks coming in, chasing everything. A fungal growth might be nice, using some abduct on a few of the Cyclones, but a whole bunch more are still alive. Hydra's trailing the battle as well. Railgun decides to back out. Maybe wait for the Broodlords to show up. I don't know. Where are they? Here they are. I guess they were part of it. They did take a lot of damage, though. I think Lock-On can hit air units. It doesn't say anything about only being able... Oh, there it is. Surface air targeting allows the Cyclone's weapon and Lock-On ability to target air units. So there we go. You can use them against the Broodlords. This base is waiting for the creep to recede here at the bottom for Beast. Consume going down again. These Vipers are going to be so important for Railgun. 69 to 60 workers. He's pretty happy at that worker count. He has spent a lot of money trying to take down this mech play from Beast. Hasn't really been able to strike a decisive blow yet. More Vipers coming out. Vipers again. Good unit. What are we doing from our Terran player getting the Infernal Pre-Igniter? Oh, I'm just kidding. That is Terran Vehicle Weapons Level 2. As well as a Refinery and five more Cyclones. So, alright. Here we come. Going to try to deal with this base. The Ultra is coming in. They do have that 8 armor making them so tough. But... The Cyclones do 600 damage over 14 seconds. Pretty tough stuff themselves. Upgrading Command Center to Planetary Fortress here. Trying to solidify his position here on the bottom part. The Vikings coming in, sniping down those Broodlords immediately. Broodlords just straight up die. Railgun concedes the point. Oof, every single Broodlord is gone. Parasitic Bomb going down on those Vikings. And Hydra is finishing off what is left of them. The entire Viking cloud is gone. The Ultras... Pushing up on top of the Cyclones. Can they catch them? Abduct being used as well to make sure a few of them do not manage to escape. But again, Railgun backing out. Not super happy about that lock-on ability being used on his Ultras. One does die. The range on the ability is so big. Such range. What is that total range here? Uh, does it say? Range 5 on that. 14. doesn't actually say, but it is pretty darn far. Have to imagine. Good use of sensor towers, I'd have to say, by Beast. We don't see this a lot from Terran players. But here's that example of the long-distance mining on this gold base. Uh, basically, these guys are kind of stuck on the backside. They have to go all the way to this command center. Or actually, this command center. Mass command centers coming up for Beast. Mass orbital commands to drop mules everywhere he can. Getting that income super, super high. Railgun taking a base at the north. But it might be a little bit too little, too late. I'm not sure what he can do in this match these cyclones are just super strong and the viking cloud is gone i suppose maybe you could remake those brood lords but maybe a giant muta flock no but once again the cyclones can use the lock on ability to air units so maybe that's not the answer after all trying to take this gold as well as railgun he's had this base for a while which is nice he has a lot of money in the bank getting the plus three missile attacks as well pretty much just sticking it to cyclones <clears throat> and hellions is our friend Beast here. Mined out in most of his bases. Natural actually still has more mineral patches than I expected. Here we come again. The Ultras leading the charge with that 8 armor. Kiting back and back and back. Abduct going down on a few of the Cyclones. But again, Abduct is good. If there's a really big expensive unit you want to Abduct, right? Like Colossus. Like Thors. But Cyclones, I just don't know if they're worth it. To use that ability, use a single Abduct. It costs, what, 75 energy. You got a single Cyclone out of it. Sure. But it's not really enough to make things happen. Lock on ability going down on all of these drones from the backside with the Cyclone. Sniping down the Spine Crawler. Yeah, look at that range. Here we go. Another attack. Taking down this gold base for Railgun. He is on his back foot. That is for sure. More Cyclones coming up. Taking down the base at the top. Cyclone Hellion pushing up the middle. Taking down Creep Tumors. There are drone transfers. There are Hellions trying to deal with these Cyclones. They're just so fast. Muta's coming in. Maybe that's the answer, right? Muta's coming in, trying to take down these Cyclones. Lock-on ability used on these Mutas. A couple of them falling, but all the Cyclones do get cleaned up. So, hmm. I don't think the Cyclones actually do splash damage with that. So maybe just a giant Muta flock coming on in might be enough to take this down. I don't know. He is making more Ultras, which I'm not sure are super effective in this particular situation. Getting plus one flyer attacks. That plus three missile attack still on the way. Widow Mines coming up. More Cyclones, more bases, more turrets everywhere. Try to take down this Planetary Fortress. The Hydras should be able to do that. Big push in here. Takes down this fourth base for Railgun. I think it's mostly mined out. Not a huge loss. Losing all those workers is never fun, though. Ultras come in. Try to take soak up some of the damage from this Planetary. Muta sniping down left and right. This Planetary does end up dead. These Hellings being chased down by some of these Lings. But again, uh, turrets 
doing a lot of damage to these mutalisks. And here we come, committing is Beast, coming right on in to the third base, taking down Evolution Chambers, taking down Lairs. Is that a Lair? That's actually a Lair. Parasitic Bomb coming, or not Parasitic Bomb, Blinding Cloud coming up. That helps a little bit. I don't think it actually prevents the lockout ability from doing, but it actually can prevent the Missile Pod. Railgun says, so. <laughs> you can't lose with Mass Cyclone, I suppose, but you're complaining about the Viper? Yeah, again, this has been a pretty chenny match back and forth here. There is a Lurker Den. I don't think Lurkers are the answer here. BC says, sure you can lose. Why not? Hellbat's coming up here to the north base. It's eventually going to take down. Yep, that extractor does die. Railgun says, if you go AFK. <laughs> BC says, getting Cyclones is like teching to Broodlords. So, I mean, I guess there's a time in there. You can do some damage. I don't know. Railgun has his Mutalisk, Ultralisk, Viper, Hydra, Ling army. He's going to try to take down this base here that is pretty much completely mined out. I don't think this is worth it, but he's going to do it anyway. Planetary going down very, very quickly to this particular army. Boom. Railgun gets a good pick up there. He's going to try to follow this up. Maybe take down this gold base if he possibly can. Hellbats sniping down this replacement fourth base. For Railgun, he still has this mining base and this base technically, but here we come. Big push. The Cyclones are here, though. Lock on ability, killing everything. Woo! Again, Abduct going down. I just don't know if it's the answer here. Railgun saying, well, I think we're going to see a good game, possibly, unless, depending on how upset Railgun is. I don't agree with that. <laughs> Respectfully disagreeing with Beast that Mass Cyclone is beatable as Zerg. Uh, yeah, Viper is dying, Hydra is dying, everything is dying. Beast says, go ahead and play Terran then and win every game with Cyclones. I don't know that Railgun is planning on doing that. There's the Kappa. Everybody loves the Kappa. I think we're just waiting for Railgun to officially tap out here. It is 34 to 30 Harvesters, but 126 to 68 Supply. Yeah. I mean, B is going to have to finish this off. Railgun doing what he can with a few lings. Some manor mules coming down. Yep, doing super long distance mining here. Actually, the links are here to deal with this. The difference is, Railgun says, Broodlord has a counter. Cyclones do not. Congratulations, GG, and that's it. Beast is victorious. So, okay. I can kind of see what Railgun, Railgun's complaining about here. If you have an idea of how to beat Mass Cyclone, let me know in the comments. That'll be really fun to discuss there. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe fungal? Like fungal growth, keep them in place with the infestors and then bring the ultralisks on top of them with a bunch of lings because lings are kind of a waste of the lock on ability. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens here. So, either way, thank you so much for watching. This has been Falcon Paladin with yet another daily Legacy of the Void cast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Again, for those of you who, who have been wanting TVZ casts, this was for you. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook, all at slash Falcon Paladin. If you like what you heard today, if you like what you saw, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. And until next time, as always, thank you for watching and take care of yourself.